It all started three years ago. Humanity was involved in a huge war with an army of robots that came from outer space to colonize the Earth. The robots only took 11 days to conquer the whole world. Since then, the remaining humans have been allowed to live but on one condition. They are forced to stay in their homes. And not only that, every human being, men, women, and even children, have implants in their ears that are useful as trackers to monitor their position. One of the victims was the father of a boy named Connor. Because being imprisoned in the house for more than three years had an impact on the father's mental state, which became so chaotic that he was immediately obliterated to ashes. After that, someone appeared in all black clothes named Robin Smythe. But strangely, the robot with the drone form showed no signs of threatening at all. And it was Robin himself who could order the robot to leave immediately. Explained there is a group of humans who choose to defect and become accomplices of the robots, where this group is known as the Volunteer Corps, of which one of the members is Robin. It is said that each zone has its own Volunteer Corps, where they are in charge of supplying food for each house, recording the number of residents and so on. Not only that, each member is also given a kind of authorization that allows them to walk freely outside the house without fear of being shot by the robots. The story will focus on a young man named Sean. In this house, Sean lives with his mother named Kate. Then there are several other people, such as an old man named Martin, then two siblings, namely Alex, and also Nathan, and the last is Connor, the boy who has now decided to live with them. It is said that Sean also still has a father named Danny who is a fighter pilot, but unfortunately his father has long disappeared where Sean has also done everything possible to find him, one of which is by distributing posters of his father's disappearance. When bored, the residents of the house usually do various kinds of activities, such as reading comics, sports, and many other things. But not infrequently, they also watch a broadcast on television which always shows the same show, namely a humanoid robot who calls himself Mediator 452. One of the robots who used to patrol said that the Mediator served as a data transfer center between robots and humans in this zone, and also he could control all the robots as he pleased. One day, while repairing a broken PlayStation, the four were talking about the information Martin had obtained. Martin sometimes exchanged information secretly with their neighbors in other houses, and the information they had recently obtained was information concerning Robin. It is known that Robin used to have a wife and also an adult son, but information circulating said that both were killed by Robin himself, on the grounds that his wife was caught cheating while his own son was involved in an illegal trading syndicate. Because Robin is single, he is now eyeing Kate aka Sean's mother to make her his new wife. Suddenly something quite surprising happened. Nathan suddenly bounced due to electric shock, but fortunately his condition was fine. But there is something that is no less surprising, where the effect of the shock also turns off the implant in his ear, which means they managed to find a way to get out of the house. In the end, after three years of waiting, the four of them were able to experience the outside world that they hadn't felt in a long time. The effect of the implant turned out not to last long, and to overcome this, they brought a large enough battery to shock themselves if at any time the implant in their ear suddenly reactivated itself. It is said that there is one place they really want to visit, namely a train museum in which there are trinkets, toys, accessories and many snacks that can still be taken. They also read one of the messages they had previously found, where the message had been received and replied to by someone. But unfortunately there was absolutely no information about the whereabouts of Danny but Sean was also told that if he wanted to find information about someone, then he could find it in the school building, because that was where all the archival records of the residents in this zone were kept. Without wasting much time, the four of them immediately went there, and because it was quite dangerous, they asked Connor to stay at the entrance while leaving him the battery. After that, the three teenagers went inside a school building. After that, the three went into a room where they saw a strange device that they had never seen before, until suddenly one of Robin's men seemed to be carrying a lot of files. The three of them quietly followed him to the archive storage room, and after the person left, then they checked the lockers until Sean found his father's archive data, and it was also revealed that Danny was still alive, where currently the father's position was housed in a hotel not far away. But what they feared happened. Each of their implants suddenly showed signs of activation, 
so they quickly return to Connor's place before the robots realize their existence. Meanwhile, Connor, who also experienced the same thing, immediately shocked himself to turn off the implant in his ear again. However, one mistake Connor made, he instead moved to another place. As a result, Sean, Alex, and Nathan, who had just returned, could not find him until it resulted in the three of them being caught by the robots. After that, the three of them were gathered in one room to be given punishment for committing serious offenses. But before that, Robin will punish one person as an example, and it turns out that the person in question is Martin, where Robin already knows if Martin secretly always communicates with other residents. For the punishment itself is to use the strange device to perform a deep scan, which apparently serves to absorb all the memories from inside the subject's head. It looks like they also replace the implant in his ear with a black implant that functions as a memory scan intermediary. Seen there is also the mediator, where he explains the tool will make the victim into a coma before then will die in a few days. After that, it was Sean's turn to do the deep scan, which while the absorption process was underway, Sean tried to provoke Robin by bringing up the issue of his wife and son. Robin, who was provoked, suddenly bumped into something and unconsciously released Sean from the device's trap. At the same time, Connor, who suddenly arrived, shot a number of fireworks, which they used the opportunity to immediately escape. And not only that, Nathan also had time to spread gas in one room to the point that there was a large enough explosion. The day has changed. The four of them continued their journey until they arrived at the hotel. However, just getting there, one of the large robots called Sentry suddenly chased and almost caught them. However, just when the robot was close to their position, something quite strange happened. When Sean moved his head, the robot behind him seemed to follow his head movements before then leaving the place. Entering one of the rooms, the four found the hotel residents enjoying a fighting match, but they all suddenly went berserk and tried to rob the four. But fortunately, the situation was conducive when a man named Wayne suddenly opened fire. After that, the four were reunited with their leader named Monique, and Monique asked them about how they could turn off the implant. Before that, both parties decided to make a deal where Sean and his friends agreed to tell the way, but in return, Monique had to tell where Danny the father had gone, because it was said that Danny was no longer in this hotel. They were met by Monique's husband, Swan, who was in poor condition. Swan said that last spring, some of the hotel's residents, including Danny, decided to go to a remote place away from the watchful eyes of the robots, and to find this place, they first had to go to an area. Swan can know all that because Swan is one of the people who also joined Danny's group. Even he also lived in a remote place for some time. Until last summer, Swan also decided to return to the hotel by himself. But when on the way, Swan got lost in the middle of the forest. Coupled with the very hot weather that day resulted in him getting symptoms of heat stroke until he ended up in a wheelchair like this. After talking with Swan, they were suddenly surprised by the sound of a robotic call asking all hotel residents to immediately gather outside, which turned out to be Robin's actions who wanted to announce something. He was looking for a boy who was none other than Sean. Not only that, Robin also brought Kate along with him. Sean so acted rashly and tried to approach him, and when he was almost caught by one of the residents, fortunately, Wayne immediately blocked him. Sean will not remain silent, where Sean, Alex, Nathan, and also Connor will go to save Kate where after saying goodbye, the four immediately went to a castle which is the headquarters of the Volunteer Corps. While Wayne and also some people plan to rebel, considering that now they already have a way to turn off the implants in their ears. Short story short, night fell. Sean and his friends were getting closer to their destination castle, but at the same time, one of the robots suddenly caught up, and just when the robot wanted to shoot them, something strange happened again. Suddenly, the robot's movements followed Sean's body movements, as if Sean could control the robot, and it turned out that the reason why he could do that was because of the black implant in his ear. As explained earlier, unlike ordinary implants that function as trackers, black implants function as intermediaries or connecting media between the subject and the memory-absorbing device, which means that the black implant is also able to connect it with robots who are also implanted with the same type of implant so that it can control the robot at will. Meanwhile, inside the castle, a young man was bringing food to Kate, 
and Kate immediately realized that the young man turned out to be her former student in the past, when Kate was still teaching at a school. For that, Kate easily persuaded the young man to hand over the room key to her, and then went down the stairs, just as the alarm was sounding. Robin and several of his members rushed out of the building, and were immediately surprised by the presence of Sean with a robot, which was then used to threaten Robin to immediately release Kate. Two small robots were seen on standby at the top of the castle to prepare for an attack, and right after Nathan and Alex disarmed the authorizers, suddenly a horse ridden by Kate appeared and ran in the opposite direction. Sean tried to call her, but the two robots above the castle used this opportunity to paralyze the robot that was being controlled by Sean. The robot was then damaged, which made Sean only able to take cover behind the robot's body. Until when one of the robots approached, Sean again used his ability to control the robot, and this time he was even able to have a vision of the robot. Sean then paralyzed one of the robots on top of the castle before then disabling the robot he was controlling. While Robin and his men had run into the castle, the four then decided to pursue Kate, and they finally met Kate on a beach. Not long after several drones were seen hovering in the distance, not wanting to take risks, they rushed away from the place using a car. The next day, the mediator came to Robin to force him to immediately capture Sean alive. Because a special facility aircraft that will conduct a deep scan of everyone in the zone will soon arrive, and the existence of Sean who now has the ability to control the robots can pose a threat. For that, the mediator gave Robin time until tomorrow afternoon to catch Sean. If not, Robin will be the first person to be deep scan. Meanwhile, Kate and others arrived at a high rock site filled with graffiti drawings to look for a clue previously told by Swan. They were almost frustrated when Connor showed them from a certain angle, a graffiti painting showing a secret message that said to cross the river three times to get to a safe place. Kate immediately opened the map that had previously been taken from the castle to determine the direction of their next destination. Along with this, from the far end of the hill, a line of robots began to arrive. After passing through the forest and crossing several rivers, they arrived at a place that looked like a makeshift tent, and inside they found a fighter plane, Spitfire, in very good condition. And when they got out, they were ambushed by a group of armed men, but fortunately, Danny, who is Sean's father and Kate's husband, appeared there. And after that, Danny and the group of people took them to a hidden settlement near a lake, there are also most of the people who are trying to hide from the robots. Danny then brought them together with a man named Donald, who was able to remove their implants. Donald is also the one who has helped Danny to save himself after the war with the robots took place. On the other hand, Robin has captured and interrogated Wayne after he and his group fought back against the robots. Robin also revealed that the robots had actually found a secret settlement near the lake, before leaving Wayne and getting off the giant deep-scan facility plane. Later that night, Kate tells everyone about the robot's plan to deep-scan all humans, and the after-effects of deep-scanning can put victims into a coma that will slowly kill them. Afterwards, Sean, who went to bed, was seen contemplating his implants being removed. The next day, Danny is seen showing Nathan the Spitfire, when suddenly the distress alarm sounds very loudly. The robots and mediators have arrived on the hill, and Robin uses the loudspeaker to force them to hand over Sean if they want to survive. There is no other choice. People immediately run to Sean's bed, and Kate cannot prevent them because they are outnumbered. But when they get there, it turns out that Sean has disappeared. It turns out that Sean himself is currently in the desert to reinsert his implant and control a drone that is passing by. Back to the settlement where Kate tells Robin that Sean is not there. But Robin and the mediator don't believe it. They then bring in a control cube to release a drilling hole that will turn the ground into lava. Danny and Nathan, who saw the incident from another hill, immediately planned to provide assistance using a Spitfire plane. Meanwhile, a robot main facility plane was seen flying into the sky with Sean controlling it from above. He planned to crash the plane into the control cube. The mediator who knew this then used a drone to take him flying to the facility and began to persuade Sean not to do anything stupid, because it was certain that Sean would not survive the impact of the collision. Sean immediately turned around to connect himself with the mediator, which surprisingly he immediately connected to the network of robots around the world. This caused the facility plane to tilt to one side, 
Sean tried to survive while the mediator fell down and broke into two parts. The robots on the hill began to attack and shoot at the facility plane. When Sean was struggling to survive, suddenly two drones came close and were ready to shoot Sean. Fortunately, at that moment, the Spitfire aircraft controlled by Danny and Nathan came and took out the two drones. When the facility plane collided with the control cube, Sean jumped from there and when he fell, he controlled a nearby drone, which made Sean manage to land safely. The destruction of the control cube makes the robots turn around and leave from the hill. Robin tries to stop the robots, but unfortunately he himself is then killed by the robot. The four then went to the mediator's damaged body, where Sean then reconnected himself with the mediator to disable all robots around the world. This also affected the entire control cube, which began to fly upwards before exploding. The exertion made Sean fall back and faint. Fortunately, after Alex kissed him, Sean regained consciousness, and they all stood together to watch the entire control cube explode in the sky. At night, everyone was seen celebrating the victory over the invasion of the robots. While Sean continued to stare at the sky and seemed to be thinking about something. And the movie ends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video. Two.